Hi, I'm Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation. I'm also the podcast host of Invest in Her and an award-winning producer, author, and TEDx speaker. Our show, Invest in Her, features phenomenal female founders and funders. As you know, women receive less than 2% of venture capital funding. Our series is about accelerating the funding of women by connecting them to funding resources. Let's meet today's guest. Welcome to this week's episode of Invest in Her. I'm your host, Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors. And today I have on an extraordinary woman. She is the founder of Unchained TV. She had her own show on CNN and Headline News for several years and also was a local anchor here in uh, at KCAL in L.A. So let's welcome to the show Jane Velez Mitchell. Hey, Jane. Catherine, I'm delighted to be here. I'm happy to have you, and I am excited to talk about what a fierce advocate you are about plant-based living. Mm -hmm. But first, I want to just talk a little bit about your very interesting background and what led you to creating Unchained TV. Um, so first of all, um, I am so dying to know about this documentary about your mother. Uh, so I know you've written books, you've done documentaries, you've had your CNN show, you've been a correspondent around the country in various cities. Really interesting background, and and I'm and I'm wanting to talk about you know why you did Unchained TV. But but first, let's talk about some of the things you've done in the past. So um, I first want to know about your mom in this documentary that you run an, won an award for about her life, right? Yeah, Anita Velez. Because I want to know where you came from. Yeah, Anita Velez dancing through life. And my mother was just an extraordinary person. She was born in 1916 before women had the right to vote, by the way, in Vieques, which is part of Puerto Rico's Commonwealth, but it's a separate island. It's yeah. a very beautiful island. Oh, wow. And um, actually, the U.S. military took it over and displaced a lot of the residents. Uh, my mother came to New York at the height of the Depression, Mm. on a boat by herself when she was 12, wow. joining her mother. And she um, already spoke three languages, Spanish, English, and French. She um, wow. pulled herself up by her bootstraps and uh, created a dance troupe called the Nita Velez Dancers that circled all through the Caribbean, the United States and Canada hotels. And her peak experience was playing the Palace Theater on Broadway. Um, when they had the five-a-days, when they were transitioning yeah. to the talkies and all of that, right. they had live performances in between the movies. And they were called the five-a-days. And, and she would do the live... this vaudeville, right? Yeah, this is yeah. the last throws of vaudeville. Yeah. And uh, we used to walk by the Palace Theater and look up, and she would remember that glorious moment of her performing at the Palace Theater. Yeah. Then she transitioned into writing plays. Um, an award-winning play was produced uh, by her granddaughter, who works at the Strasburg Institute in New York. And so um, it's a very artistic family. I went into journalism. Um, my dad so I'm Puerto Rican on my mother's side, Irish on my dad's side. He Ooh, was what a, what a combination. I know, what a combo, huh? <laughs> Look we out. We have it any other way. <laughs> he was an advertising executive straight out of Mad Men. He had his own agency um, with some partners on Madison Avenue. Uh -huh. And uh, so it was a very interesting um, melange of people that I grew up with. We had uh, my dad's social climber friends. We had my mother's showbiz friends. I don't know if you ever saw the Woody Allen film Broadway Danny Rose, but there was a lot of it was like that. <laughs> there were people coming they in. They knew who were, you all. <laughs> they were famous for, yeah. oh, I beat Fats Domino in a you know game once. I mean, everybody had a story. A lot mm. of very colorful people. And uh, it was very interesting. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I grew up directly across the street from Carnegie Hall. And uh, wow. it was, yeah, I mean, Anita Luce, the playwright, was in the so building. So in other words, you knew how to get to Carnegie Hall. Well, I didn't <laughs> practice enough, obviously. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, when I was a kid, I, there was a there's a side uh, theater called Little Carnegie, or at least there was. And we were in performances at Little Carnegie, tap dancing and whatnot. But my mom wasn't a stage mother, per se, but she did want me to um, 
achieve. You know, every day I went to classes after school. If it wasn't tap dancing or uh, painting or sculpture or piano or flamenco dancing or I mean, it was <laughs> constant. They say tiger moms, right? She was she was a tiger mom, but she was also um, a very compassionate person. She was where I got my animal activism. Mm -hmm. When she was a child in Puerto Rico, she had a friend who was a pig and that pig was killed for food. She fainted. Oh my gosh. And um, when she woke up, when she came to, she, she shunned meat from that point on. Wow, so, oh, so that's where this was born. Well, yeah, we, yeah. we knew that uh, hot dogs and hamburgers didn't fall from hot dog and hamburger trees growing up. We didn't, right. we weren't strict vegans. The word vegan wasn't even around. Right. But um, we were pescatarian thinking we were vegetarian. Uh, right. Kind of a sloppy vegetarian-ish family. Right. My dad also converted to, we didn't have meat in the house, but we did have fish. And um, they didn't even really cook because she was showbiz and he certainly didn't cook. Right. Um, so she knew how to make spaghetti with clam sauce and paella. And my dad made a great uh, curry. And that was it. The rest of the time we went out to dinner almost every night. <laughs> Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I knew you had to come from some really resilient woman. Mm -hmm. And of course you did, um, because you are such a fierce advocate of the plant-based uh, lifestyle. And um, I just love what you've done with uh, Unchained TV. We, of course, met through some vegan friends, <laughs> Lisa Bloom and yes. Danny Rukin. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I, I have looked at your Unchained TV. I hope people will tune into it. It's so interesting, uh, the programming that you have on there. Like, kudos to you. You have on great documentaries, great cooking shows. Uh, I noticed you have a cooking show with someone I had here on the podcast, uh, Trans... Uh, Billy Lee. Billy Lee. It's me, love, Billy Lee. I love, love her. Love Billy Lee. Beautiful, mm -hmm. fun, great cooking show. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed you also have not only cooking shows, but interesting news shows and uh, shows about... Um, you know, saving animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, one was, uh, I noticed, uh, featured uh, the Prince, Prince Harry. Prince and, Harry and, and Meghan, Meghan Markle. Yeah. I mean, really great programming on your channel, which people can find on Amazon Fire. They can find it online. They can find it on their phone, right? On Yeah, just Apple. download on yeah. TV. One word. It's totally free. It's nonprofit. We don't want to provide any barriers. Uh, you can subscribe if you want and fill in your email, but you don't have to. We really just want people to see this information because it's being kept from the people. Because advertiser-based media, who keeps the lights on? The very companies that are doing the animal exploitation, destroying the planet and hurting human health. So you're not gonna get the story from them. And so um, we're filling a gap. The gap is that, you know, we're in crisis. We are yeah. barreling toward a climate apocalypse. Uh, Americans are sick. Their uh, longevity rates are going down for the first time in you know right. history. We're, we're right. as a, the title of a documentary, fat, sick, and nearly dead. I mean, we've got a crisis in the healthcare system. We've got an environmental crisis. And we've got a spiritual crisis because the essence of all suffering is that the essence of all evil is that some suffering doesn't count. If you look back throughout history, whether it's people of a certain background, whether it's women, um, it's like their suffering doesn't count, but it does. And now we're in a situation where we're killing 80 billion land animals, not including fish. If you put fish in there, it'd mm -hmm. be trillions. We're killing 80 billion land animals every year and we're torturing them in the process. And we're saying as a culture, it doesn't count. You can say you're a loving person. You can say you're a kind person. You can say you're a nonviolent person and you can basically be a co-conspirator in this torture and killing and it doesn't count but it does count and mother nature is angry and it's coming back to haunt us i'd say mother nature is doing for us what we refuse to do for ourselves right okay uh we are going to pay a huge price for our callous treatment of other beings. Right. And, and you know, I'm listening right now to one of the great courses, which I love to listen to as I walk, about the origin of 
the universe and the origin of life. And we all came from the Big Bang. Okay, Mm -hmm. so we are all interconnected. So for us to say, which is speciesism, that we count more than these other beings who have eyes, who have hearts, who have brains, who feel terror, who had mothers, who want to be with their mothers, whose mothers, the mothers want to be with their babies. And we can say, oh, that's that's all that's garbage. The only thing that counts is human beings. No, it's just not true. And we've been sold a bill of goods and we have to wake people up. What we're doing at Unchained TV, we're a nonprofit. I don't take a salary. Uh, We are literally, I wake up every day and say, what can I do? And that's why I'm so grateful for you having me on because you can't get this on the mainstream media. Well, here's the thing. I like Unchained TV as your average citizen learning about the plant-based life uh, because I feel like it eases people into it. So, like, you have a doctor on there talking about why this is better for your health. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have entertaining cooking shows about Mm -hmm. how to make vegan dishes and how easy it can be. Um, So I like the entertainment style. You have hardcore news on there, too, and you cover, you know... um, events that are happening in live time around the world it's fascinating people should definitely check it out to whether they're interested or not just to educate themselves and see if maybe they could like move their mindset just a little bit in that direction and i think people are don't you feel culture starting i mean you've been at this a long time but uh, as a person not in that space, but with friends mm-hmm. that are, um, like, for instance, I just had someone talk to me about an all-female company called Planting Hope, mm. and um, uh, they're raising money for their company, all run by women, because I do believe it's women that will save the world. I believe. I agree with yeah, you right there. Yeah, and, and it's those, you know, women impact 80% of the buying. Mm-hmm. That means they impact... Uh, probably at least 80% of what we eat in our households. So it really is women that can help change culture with regard to plant-based eating and healthy eating and uh, saving the planet. Like you're saying, all these things are intertwined. It's it's not about just eating healthy for yourself, but it's about doing things that are right for the planet, for the environment, for the children in the future. So thinking about not themselves, but but generations to come, right? Um, So that's what I love about what you're doing. And uh, I think Unchained TV, uh, I'd like to know, like, when and how did you decide? Because here you are with this, you know, amazing, popular show on CNN and Headline News. What made you gravitate from that to start this? Because this was no easy feat, I know, to start a channel. Let me tell you, it's not easy. I work from seven in the morning. I've already done an edit before I came here today, and I'll go back and post articles and upload uh, videos. So it's around the clock. And as you know, most networks are run with thousands of people. Mm -hmm. I have myself, and there's three other women. Right. And we're all basically either volunteer or paid just a pittance to cover right. things so not yeah. me how did but, you make that decision though to transition well sure well i was in mainstream media for um more years than i care to admit i usually cut off the first couple of uh, jobs <laughs> from my uh, bio but yeah for approximately 40 years and uh i started in 77 you when started i graduated at 10, obviously <laughs> <laughs> I, st- I graduated from nyu in 77 and a couple of weeks later i had my first job in fort myers florida yeah worked there as a reporter anchor went to minneapolis then went to philadelphia and then i went back to my hometown new york which was great wcbs tv was literally on the block i grew up 57 oh, that Street. had to be so fun it was fun yeah. but it's tough working in new york i saw yeah. parts of new york that i never even knew existed wow you know i was living uh, midtown manhattan when i am going to nyu but i didn't know uh, really the scope of the city and we were covering you know, local news is mostly covering crime let's let's be real so it's pretty brutal yeah um crime and fires and acid spills and all sorts of things that yeah <laughs> you don't normally so um, i never understood why the news really focuses on that because there's so many people doing good work in the world 
why don't they cover that? They think they think, and I think it's men making that decision, honestly, at the top of these news stations, that people just want to see crime and you know fires and killings and stuff. But I don't believe that. I believe the majority of us want to see uh, isn't my favorite part is at the end of the news when they tell the somebody's doing something amazing story helping autistic children or well, something. Well, you're the one because the <laughs> rating show that um, people I I hate to say it but the the truth is I think people get home from work and they have had a rough day and blah 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 and, and they just want to know that somebody had a worse day. Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't know about that. Well, no. Look, the ratings show. When you do happy news, the ratings absolutely crater. People really? say, I just, you know, and also when you talk to people, oh, I don't watch news. I only, I watch PBS. And yeah. I don't read the tabloids. I just read the New Yorker. And they're lying. Yeah, okay? Right. So right. the truth is that people love to see the the tabloid trash and they they yeah. like to see people especially wealthy gorgeous people having a really bad day okay yeah. right. so <laughs> we just have to be real about what makes because the ratings show it very very clearly that is really yeah. fascinating so um yeah. that's for news yeah that's for news yeah and uh you know it, it, not to say there aren't serious issues i mean you look at I, my stomach churns when I look at the news, look at the war in Ukraine, look at uh, mass shootings. Look, at, I mean, it's horrific. It's horrific. So we have to we have to be informed yeah. about those things. But I'm talking more about the crime genre, right. which I was in. But, yeah, but you were in. And also, uh, I, I recall you did a book on like several things in that sector, like you did a, a mm -hmm. book on Jody Arias. Yes, right? I did. Which, I know the secret life of Jody Arias, which is a New York Times bestseller. Right. And I also did um, my first book, Secrets Can Be Murder, What America's Most Sensational Crimes and Trials Tell Us About Ourselves. Right. Wow. And then I did a, a memoir called I Want My Journey from Addiction and Overconsumption to a Simpler, Honest Life. Yeah. That was also a New York Times bestseller. And then I finally did the book that I wanted to do, Addict Nation, um, Our Addictogenic Culture. Um, and I do believe we're addicted to meat and dairy. You yeah. know, a dairy... Um, and sugar. I mean, let's face it. People are addicted sure, to sugar. Sure. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought that up because back to the ladies that are creating Planting Hope uh -huh. are also coming out with sesame milk, which actually uses a whole lot less water than making almond milk. So good for the planet, right? But what about all the water that the cows use? Now, yeah, when, when right. news reporters do stories about the drought in California, they yeah. always talk about the almond farms. Yeah. But California is arguably the largest dairy state in the nation, having eclipsed Wisconsin. And do you know how much water cows consume? And we have Think such about a it. water problem here. And yeah. then the pollution, the right. excrement from these millions and millions of cows. But nobody talks about that. Right. Why? Because of the commercials, fast food and pharmaceuticals. Right. I also did a documentary called Countdown to Year Zero, which uh, profiles the work of Dr. Silas Rao, who was very instrumental in the acceleration of internet speeds. He had worked briefly with Al Gore. He split from Al Gore because Al Gore really didn't want to focus on animal agriculture's impact on climate change. And he's written a white paper making a very powerful case that when you analyze this very, very vast subject, um, in a certain way, it shows that animal agriculture is the leading cause of climate change. This has been disputed, but nobody argues that it is not. Everybody admits it's a leading cause. OK. Right. And um, so he says we're all being factory farmed. OK. Right. It's not just the animals that are being factory farmed. The people who eat the bad food so that they can get sick, so that the healthcare system can give them the stent operations and give them the statins, which are a multi, multi billion dollar industry. They are also being factory farmed. Right. All to help the 0.1% right. that are already fabulously wealthy and have private chefs and do not allow their kids to eat the food that they are serving, particularly targeting communities of color. Right. Well, that's why all the cheap fast food places are in those urban areas where people can't afford the proper food. But they could uh, afford it or McDonald's could choose to provide healthier options. I think people, we, we want to talk to the average person listening to say, hey, open your mind, you know, 
Jane's here to share information yeah. maybe you sure. didn't know. Obviously, she's very passionate about it, and somebody's got to be. Mm -hmm. And you're so good at educating the public about what's going on. And I think it's hard sometimes for people to hear, but what's a little bit easier for them to digest, and that's why I love that you have Unchained <laughs> TV, is for them to go and watch some videos about the, the absolute um, education of understanding why it makes sense health-wise for the planet for so many reasons let me explain because it, it, see the problem is that people aren't getting the information that would make them alarmed right because we're in a, a, basically we're trapped in a, a meat matrix where the agencies of government who are purporting to want to solve climate change are actually accelerating climate change right. because the farm bill which is actually coming up for renewal yeah. in october um provides many many tens of billions of dollars in subsidies to the meat and dairy industry which is actually the problem accelerating climate change right and I've, this is the thing with so many whether it's gun control or that you know the politicians are just playing politics and not mm -hmm. doing what's good for the people. The only thing that's going to change it is what you're doing, Jane. The people have to rise up and say no more with all of these issues that are not being addressed by those lawmakers that are supposed to be representing us, right? So really appreciate what you do. I want people to, they can subscribe for free uh, mm -hmm. at Unchained TV, yeah. right? Um, and I know you have like daily live things happening uh like i said the cooking shows the news the documentaries i just want to reiterate for those that just tuned in um amazing content to educate ourselves on why this really matters and what people can do to take action for themselves for the planet for their children for future generations so thank you for creating that platform let's tell everybody how they can find it you can literally go to your app store on your phone and put in the word unchained tv one word now if you just put in unchained some porn sites will come up so just put in <laughs> unchained tv one word and it's literally free you just hit it and the app comes up and that's uh, your portal to more than a thousand films. You can also uh, get it, just go to Unchained TV and click watch now, or you can download it on your TV. If you have Apple TV, you can just put in Unchained TV. If you have Amazon Fire Stick, you can just put in Unchained TV. And if you have a Roku, you can just put in Unchained TV. And I mean, the thing that I want to say is that this is not a sacrifice, okay? It's an adventure. I use the analogy. I love that. Yeah, I'm sober. Um, knock on wood, I'll hit 28 years on April Fool's Day, which is a perfect <laughs> so, a sobriety day for me because, boy, did I make a fool of myself. Um, and when before I got sober, I thought, well, I'll never have fun again. I'll never go to a party again. I'll never have fun at opera ski. I'll never... And you've been having more fun than ever. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing with going plant-based. There's more variety in vegan cooking. There's yeah. tens of thousands of fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, and legumes that can be arrayed in an infinite number of combinations versus six items that we have to dress up, right? right. Like whatever, chicken, steak, blah, blah, blah. Right. And so you use those spices on... Uh, the plants right you can have the same taste sensations right and you know the thing is people say well what do you eat grass no so then we create like veggie burgers and then they say but that's processed well do those same people who are yelling about the fact that we mush some peas together with nutritional yeast reveal to you that processed meat is officially cancer causing according to the world health organization if you saw a parent giving a kid a cigarette you'd call child services but they are shoving processed meat which is deli slices hot dogs bacon down the throats of these kids it is officially cancer causing according to the world health organization nobody talks about it so let me ask you how did you come up with that name unchained well i was when when my show wrapped on cnn headline news where i did do a segment once a week about these issues I will always say, hey, thank you for letting me do that. Because when I was hired, I said, would you mind if I did a little animal segment once a week? And they went, mm, no, we don't see a problem with that. 
<laughs> then I started doing real animal rights activism. And to their credit, they never they never stopped me once a week. That's great. So the show ended. I was at that moment in my life where I realized, OK, this is the end of the line. I've been doing this 38 years at that moment. And uh, I, I actually went to an executive and she said, well, you're very passionate about this issue. Obviously, Jane, why don't you do that full time? So I, I took her advice. She's one of great. the top people. And well, I'm glad that you did. Somebody's yeah. got to lead the way. You are definitely a leader in this space. How can people find you and Unchained TV on social? Well, it's Unchained underscore TV on Instagram, Facebook.com slash Jane Velez Mitchell. The reason being, um, I... I left on great terms. They gave me all my social media. Yeah. So I took the Facebook, which was my name, yeah. at JVM Twitter. And, you know, uh, you asked why did I start the uh, streaming network? Well, we were just doing Facebook primarily. Mm -hmm. We got like 17 million views. Wow. Um, in like a couple of years after Facebook Live started, we started doing live all over the world. We had 70 contributors Well, globally. and you also had a lot of fans. Yes, yeah. yes. I say I used to cover crimes. Now I'm covering the crime of the century. <laughs> um, I love that. And uh, so what happened was, of course, you know, Cambridge Analytica and all the drama, the algorithms changed and Facebook is much more pay pay for play. Yes. You can't get the thousands of views like we were getting millions of views. Yeah. So we had to pivot. Right. And then we pivoted to Amazon um, Prime and we did a 20 episode cooking show called New Day New Chef, which won two taste awards, which is like the Oscars of food. Celebrity packed. Even Billie Eilish did a cameo and uh, she's a vegan. And uh, that was on Amazon Prime. But then once again, after hundreds of thousands of views all over the English speaking world, one day I woke up and it was 99 cents an episode. <laughs> well, the views started going down. Nobody wants to. They'll pay for Succession, House of Cards, you know, yeah. the morning show, but they're not going to pay for other content. So that was a big lesson for me. Right. So I was like, actually, our producer said he's Irish. He goes, well, we can you can start your own streaming network if you want to. And yeah. I said, let's do it <laughs> without really thinking about it. Whoa. Um that is kind of my personality, you know, throw your hat over the fence, follow yep. it kind of thing. Yeah. And now I'm working I would say harder. Throw your bra over the fence. Throw my bra. <laughs> <laughs> throw my bra over the fence. What bra? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm really glad I did it because I feel that our movement certainly has the obligation to use every technology. Streaming has just overtaken broadcast and cable as the number one way just recently right. that people are consuming TV. It's still in its infancy. Yeah. People are still like HTML one, two, but once they get it, we have right. the potential to reach a third of the world's population because approximately 3 billion people have streaming devices now. Right, right. So um, that's what we want to do is we want to wake up the world in time because the clock is ticking. Right. I just need to say, because of animal agriculture using a huge percentage of the arable land on this planet, either for cattle grazing or to grow crops to feed 80 billion land animals who do almost nothing but eat because they're confined. Why? Because when you move around, you burn calories. Right. So they fatten them up and they kill most of them as babies. You know, most pigs are killed at six months old. Um, that land is deforested, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And so for, for commodity crops to feed those uh, animals and for cattle grazing. Uh, for example, uh, three quarters or more of all the soy produced is fed to farmed animals. So that's what's really funny when people say, well, soy. Well, when you eat meat, you're eating compressed soy. <laughs> oh. So um, that that land is not forested. Guess what? Trees absorb carbon. Mm -hmm. OK, this is why we can make an argument that it's the leading cause of climate change. If you think about right. it in terms of deforestation and the opportunity lost of all that carbon being absorbed. Right. If we eliminated animal agriculture and reforested these lands that um, are currently being used for animal agriculture and grew trees and planted trees, we could immediately begin to absorb carbon and we would eliminate the methane and methane is far more potent than fossil fuels. And it also diminishes much more rapidly. So one of the arguments that Dr. Rao makes is that we're the United Nations is is essentially, which has a deal with the uh, meat secretariat, they're calculating methane 
in terms of its impact over 100 years, when it actually deteriorates after about a decade into a less potent substance. And this is a lot of science, but if you want to boil it down, it's like eating an entire chocolate cake in a day and calculating the impact on your body over 10 years. Right. It's not going to show the impact. Right. So the way they're Maybe calculating. Maybe that's what I'm it, doing wrong. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the way they're calculating methane's yeah. impact, which is yeah. where it, it's, it's to a large degree from animal agriculture. Right. They're calculating it in a way that underestimates its impact, and they're not including the opportunity lost of all that carbon that could have been absorbed and could be absorbed right now if we reforested the land we're using for animal agriculture. Right. So Very good point. These are really important points, people. Yes, they are. Additionally, because all that land is being deforested like the Amazon for cattle grazing, all those animals that used to live there are running out of habitat, which is accelerating extinction. You you know, this is not me saying this. You can look at uh, Sir David Attenborough's documentary, Breaking Boundaries. When right. we eliminate all the species and we're on track to literally wipe out all wildlife vertebrates within a decade, yeah. okay? If you look at biomass on this planet- And wiping out the forests, I mean- That's what I'm a, saying, it's the It's a forest. no-brainer. Yeah. But it, it, yeah. if it's a no-brainer, right. why is it that people say, well, I love your passion. I had pets, too, as a child. Why are they, why are we not taking this issue seriously? Right. The future of our planet. You know, I'm also, I told you, I'm listening to this, this great course. Well, dinosaurs used to be around. Right. They went extinct. Animals, species go extinct all the time. Absolutely. In our arrogance, we'd like to think that we can't go extinct. But I will tell you, if the planet gets too hot to support human life or any life, mm-hmm. We're going to go extinct. Yeah, and all the uh, catastrophic weather it's causing will wipe everybody out, too. Right. Yeah, this is this is why I wanted to have you on. Yeah. I mean, what you're doing is really important. Um, I just want to close by saying uh, thank you, Jane, for being mm-hmm. on. Uh, you can find Jane on LinkedIn, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, LinkedIn, as well as me, uh, Catherine Gray. And, of course, thanks for tuning in to Invest in Her. You can find uh, us on Instagram as well. And please visit SheAngelInvestors.com. We're always trying to connect female founders to funding resources for things that they're inventing, innovations and ideas that will help save the planet, like Unchained TV. Mm-hmm. That is such a great resource for you to tune into and learn more about why it's so important for you to consider a plant-based lifestyle for your health, for the environment, for future generations. Please check it out. Go sign up, subscribe for free today. Check Jane out online, uh, connect with her through social media or uh, download the app and connect to their, their app, Unchained TV. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Remember to invest in her. So important to fund women. Women will save the planet. Thanks. Make it a great day.